Welcome to DACOM Digital, the digital asset compliance and market integrity podcast. Solidus Labs hosts conversations with the builders, movers, and shakers of a safe and regulated crypto and DeFi industry. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another DACOM Digital podcast where we have conversations with the builders, movers, and shakers of a safe and regulated crypto and DeFi ecosystem. Uh, we have a unique pleasure today uh, to have with us Rija uh, Rame Loarison, uh, who is the Chief Compliance and Legal at Maria, one of uh, France's leading uh, uh, regulated platforms, and also, uh, you know, uh, just one of the biggest experts I've got to meet about uh, not only regulation in Europe, but also how do you actually turn it uh, in, now in the age of Mika into compliance Thank programs. Rija, it's wonderful to have you. Thank you for finding the time. Thank you, Ryan, and thank you for inviting me. It's very, very pleasure to talk with you today. And uh, I, I, I can return you the, the, the tribute to Solidus Labs as the best solution I've ever seen on my lifetime. And uh, even in the compliance part and uh, also the, the how to how it's understand DeFi, it's very wonderful. It's the whole source of the solution. So I'm very happy to talk with you. To, to have a great discussion with you today. No, oh, thank you so much. Uh, you know, it's funny, I'm, I'm blushing and I'm starting to sweat okay. from your compliments, even though when we started the conversation, we talked about how today is one of the hottest days in the history of Europe. Yes. <laughs> While here in, in the US, I'm speaking from Brooklyn, uh, it's thunderstorms. Uh, so it's funny, based on the conversation, we're starting to change uh, temperatures. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, appreciate it. Uh, and yeah, let's uh, let's get going. I think uh, there's too much expertise in your head that you know I wanna I, I wanna I wanna get I wanna share with uh, so many others who listen to this, uh, trying to to think about how their crypto firms should do compliance. So, but before we jump into that, uh, you know, I've never heard uh, a uh, crypto journey. And specifically, your crypto compliance journey that isn't interesting, and you know you specifically are a very interesting guy. So, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, um, you know, uh, and and you know your your work at Maria and beyond? Yes, about myself. First, uh, I am uh, half Malagasy and French. I grew up uh, in Madagascar during my first eighteen years, and uh, I came in France uh, at uh, eighteen to to do the university uh, for. Um, education. Uh, I studied law. I ended it uh, with a specialized master degree uh, in uh, specialized in compliance, in compliance and uh, AML. Uh, so the where they start, started uh, to work uh, in the financial market, mm -hmm. in uh, European leader on the financial market in the group exam group. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I worked uh, in uh, an asset management company within this group during uh, my third, during my, uh, my, my last years at the university. It was uh, an internship during one year where I worked uh, and I discovered Mar. Uh, I started my, uh, prefer the, how to say that, the, the first step on, was on my job as compliance officer uh, when Mar was enforced in Europe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and I think that's why we are uh, we get along together because uh, you know the it's a it's a great subject on which I worked for. It, uh, well, it was also the implementation of uh, Mifid two in France, and uh, this experience uh, was a very good asset for me to embrace crypto regulation afterwards. Uh, after that, I worked a uh, few years uh, at the world leader on the payment and transfer money transfer, Western Union. And uh, no, uh, I, after that, I joined the Maria because I was searching to, you know, to, you know I, I, I heard about crypto during uh, many years as uh, the, the, the Bitcoin has been uh, created uh, just one year after I finished the, the high school. And I, want, I did not have time because of my, the, the, the difficulty of the, the law study. I did not have time to, to document and to educate myself on it. So at the, at the last year, as the last years of my uh, experiences at Western Union, I really wanted to, to embrace the crypto industry. So I took uh, one, uh, one hour every day to educate myself on it. And uh, then I took the opportunity to join Maria when I saw the, that they were searching for a compliance officer. 
and uh, I, uh, at the very beginning, I joined Maria. It was wonderful because I, I identified that my experiences from the financial market and the payment service was a strong asset to, to crypto because crypto merged all of the, uh, both of them. And um, that's why we are here right now. Right. Well, I have a million questions. Uh, you know, many of them are about Madagascar just because I'm, you know, it's one of the most uh, fascinating places in the world for me. But I don't know if we'll get to go there, but just really, I hope, will, I, I, I hope, I hope I'll get to visit. Uh, but uh, so one question I always kind of ask you, 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 you know, before we jump into the crypto piece, which is the center here, but, but from a compliance perspective, you, you actually studied compliance. You knew you want to work in compliance. And I'm kind of curious to ask, how did you know? Uh, what made you passionate uh, about it? Madagascar has something uh, to do with that because, you know, uh, Madagascar is unfortunately one of those countries who, where uh, corruption is uh, very strong and uh, very well settled. And um, uh, you, you are facing it uh, in, uh, in each part of your life and every day. And uh, I, I see how, how the, our corruption is... Uh, is, uh, is steering down a country and the whole society. And uh, I've been uh, sensibilized and I, 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 I live, I, I left, I live, uh, I don't want to say that. I, um, I, uh, I, I, I was living it from, my, from the very bottom of my heart and all my, all my personal being. I saw that it is not uh, good and uh, if you want to build a strong society, a strong economy, a strong government, you have to to be to 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 strengthen the ethics and to have a solid foundations. And uh, that that why when I don't when I was searching for a master the master degree to to get specialized in and to work in uh, a job to work in. Uh, uh, when, I saw, when I heard about compliance and uh, the whole, the, the heard also the history of the reason why compliance uh, is uh, getting more important uh, uh, with years, I, I embraced this uh, this uh, this job, and uh, that that's why I am very uh, happy and honored also to to be a compliance officer. That is such an interesting answer, because. Um, you raise such an interesting point, right? Because I think in a lot of places where there's very strong kind of corporate, uh, you know, uh, guardrails uh, guard, uh, guard and, and rules, uh, you know, in, in, in places like the United States, compliance is perceived as something that oftentimes is like a little bit back office, uh, you know, a little bit unnecessary, but, but you're speaking, and by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm rephrasing, so tell me if I'm, if I missed anything, but you're basically speaking from the experience of someone who grew up in a place where those standards did not exist and seeing, yeah. you know, uh, how related compliance is to ethics and to, you know, to, to orderly business, etc. You're saying it was important for you to, under, you know, to be able to, to you, you know, you really saw the importance of being able to do it right. Um, so I, I think it's a really interesting point you're making there. Yes, because for you, it's normal. For you, it's, uh, it has been settled. The ethic has been set up as the norm of the society. As, uh, as uh, you know, when you when you leave, you you do not uh, cross the road if the the green light is not uh, is not for you, etc. etc. You know, but uh, when you live in a country where there is no traffic light and uh, and uh, there there is an, and there, there is no rule enforcement, uh, you particularly in the US have a strong strong mm -hmm. law enforcement. You are you are known as a country where law enforcement is very important. The corruption uh, the corruption act has been uh, voted uh, and uh, applied since many years and many decades. Uh, and you are so as a, uh, thanks to the strong uh, leadership of the USA, all the uh, the Western society followed this uh, this path. Uh, but and not for you, it is just the normal, you know. And when, when you live uh, in a society where, where the, the, these things are not normal, you realize that, okay, uh, human rights is fundamental, uh, corruption also is very fundamental to get the business uh, done. It's, uh, 
it, it's a really fascinating philosophical conversation almost I would say to me it connects to the general perception you know when we think about growth we often think about the engines and not about the brakes but at the end of the day how fast a car can go depends on As much as it depends on how strong the engine is it depends on how effective the brakes are uh, in a sense that none of us and by the way I'm sorry if you can hear those sirens I'm in Brooklyn it's 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 part of the it's sound podcast episode <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh, it's just uh, you know uh, just, just natural here I don't even hear it but sometimes I remember that it gets into the recording <laughs> but, but you know, The, the it's point. good because it means that the law enforcement is still exactly. working. The regulators are coming. Yes. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so, but, you know, it's, it's just such an interesting point that, you know, having, having grown up in a place where, in a way, the brakes, right, were not as strong. You really, you know, built a big faith in, in how important they are. And that ended uh, projecting you into a career in compliance. Super interesting. Yeah. Uh, it's not only brakes, uh, Henry. It's uh, brakes, airbags, so all safety. If you want to run the car, you can, you have to, you, you can in run, run it, uh, how to say that, safely, if you know that all the safety uh, equipment are okay. And that's, uh, that's how it works. Right. And by the way, it's also, uh, you know, that's also where regulators come in because, you know, none of us would get into a car without not only knowing that there's brakes, but also knowing that a regulator said the brakes work. Right. Exactly. Uh, anyway, but I'll, I'll move us forward <laughs> because there's just so much more that I think, uh, uh, you know, you, you, that I know you have to share. But let, let's talk a little bit about your more work as, as Maria, because you, you, you know, uh, you know, you've been there at a very interesting time, a time when early regulation of crypto started being introduced yeah. in France. And, and don't worry, I'll ask you a lot of questions about uh, crypto regulation in France and Europe before we finish this episode. But specifically, you know, You know, Maria is one of not that many uh, firms that are already registered with the yeah. AMF, right? The Agence Marché Financier, if I remember yeah. correctly. Autorité. Uh, yeah, Autorité which... des Marchés Financiers. Oh, pardon. Pardon. <laughs> eh, my, I, I really shouldn't speak French because it's not, my French is uh, very, very basic. But, uh, eh, you know, it must have not been easy to get registered with a crypto f- with a crypto company, you know, in such an early time and the regulations weren't clear. So before we go into today where regulation is more clear, can you tell us a little bit about those early days and what it meant to uh, lead compliance for a firm like Maria uh, and become okay. registered? Yes. Uh, at the very beginning, Francis, uh, just to, to, to introduce the, the answer, France, we had the chance that France uh, embraced crypto early, very early, at the last bull, uh, the, the bull run of 2017. They uh, identified it as an opportunity, and um, they, um, they set the legal framework specialized, uh, dedicated to crypto. Uh, I, uh, I used to say that it is, uh, it is, uh, they are using uh, the, the, the methodology of progressive regulation. Okay, they saw that, okay, first thing, they, they, they applied the, like the risk-based approach, which is the good, uh, great principle in, in compliance. They applied the risk-based approach, but from the uh, building of the regulatory from work pers- perspective. So they saw that, okay, uh, of course, there is investment protection, market integrity, which is necessary uh, later. But first, The, the very first risk is AML, um, uh, money laundering and uh, financing terrorism and fraud, etc. So the very first, uh, the very first level is that. And that way the, the French uh, regulators uh, first uh, uh, enforce the AML to the uh, DSP, to digital asset service provider. So they created uh, this, uh, this uh, entity, the naming of the digital asset service provider, setting a specific uh, set of rules. And uh, that was uh, difficult. Uh, that was a great challenge for everybody. On the same on the on one hand, you have a very, uh, very young companies, like crypto native companies, who used to, most of them at this time, most of them have, have been used to run uh, already before these regulations. So they, they run the business 
as a, as a, as a website uh, providing services uh, for uh, any kind of service like uh, like uh, like you have Italy Express, Amazon, etc., etc. So they they sell they sold crypto that way, and from uh, from the day they gave the register the the license the, the first step of the license which we call the registering enregistrement they they basically become uh, an institu a financial institution mm -hmm. and it's like you are get, you are getting uh, you are getting older and uh, from the time, one day you are young and the day after you are an adult and you have to assume all the consequences then the legal consequences on it so the great challenge is for the leader of the compliance and such company is to implement a compliance culture you have to implement a compliance culture you, uh, of course, I knew that uh, the, the the next step would be uh, MIFID like uh, regulation, but uh, I I want I had to accompany them step by step to let them to grow and uh, make them uh, understand the, the necessity and uh, uh, and how uh, useful the regulation is uh, for the for the structuration of the business. And I think we get the job done because Meria is now one of those few uh, crypto native company here in France who has a very good uh, image uh, from the regulator. So they they identify uh, they identify us uh, as a, a good player, as some uh, as uh, one of those companies uh, who, who really want to to get the job done properly. And to uh, make the make the make the industry uh, stronger. Um, really, really fascinating points you bring up. I'm trying to decide which ones to focus on, but there are quite a few. But I think your point about this challenge, when you're a crypto native firm, um, of you know switching quite quickly from oh. you, know, you described it as from you know growing up to being an adult from a compliance perspective is is a challenge because. Historically, compliance um, programs, you know, are very big, very comprehensive and very hard. You know, the compliance requirements from traditional financial institutions are very hard for a startup to maintain. You know, it's something we see in our work quite often. And for us, being crypto native also means being able to start small in a very scalable way that is nonetheless, uh, that, you know, that nonetheless allows uh, showing the regulators what they need to see to feel confident that you, you can be compliant. Exactly. Um, but I think that's a really interesting, uh, that's a re really interesting insight into your experience, uh, you know, doing that in France. So, let, so now, obviously, you, you've also emphasized in a few different ways how strategic Maria were about, uh, you know, being compliant and, you know, obviously also just hiring someone with your experience, you know, just bringing in, a, you know, a, a chief compliance officer with your experience. Uh, you know, is part of that. Um, so I guess uh, if I if I if I kind of take that, you know, I you know I do if if I take that into the current era, right? Like you know, of, uh, a lot a lot has happened <laughs> obviously in the past year, and specifically in Europe, Mika, a, mm -hmm. which is, I think it's fair to say, correct me if I'm wrong, the most comprehensive cross-border uh, yeah. crypto regulation in the world. Today, yeah, yes, right? it's, 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 across the EU, has been introduced. Before we go into, you know, more specifically, what is Mika? I do want to hear it from you because you know it better than most. How was that? Like, you know, having kind of been at Maria at an earlier stage, uh, you know, you know, the, you know, going through the process you just described. You know, what's the difference now? Like, you know, in terms of like how you have to think about compliance. Like, it's it's kind of like there's been a, a quick switch between. Yes. You know very limited clear requirements to very broad clear requirements obviously regulatory clarity is a good thing but it's also a challenge so leading uh maria's compliance effort like how 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 has that affected you yes uh, see, uh living at maria and working at maria um, helped also to identify the necessity of this uh, this level up on the from the regulatory side i explain you i, I will uh, use an illustration uh, you know, Terra Luna crisis has been very instructive and constructive for the industry. Yeah, and uh, we lived it from May or June. It was May or June last year, so a little yeah. year. 
uh, we lived it from the inside. I lived it from the inside because, you know, uh, I was uh, the first compliance legal, uh, compliance legal officer who structured the, the structured the the lending solution in uh, C5. So we asked, we were the first in France to deliver this uh, this solution, and and uh, and Tira Luna and the one of the the the, the, the CRV. Uh, the, the CRV and the, those those who are using uh, the stablecoin uh, the stablecoin UST uh, one we, on, on of these uh, DeFi uh, pool or the DeFi protocol who were using uh, the UST stablecoin was mm -hmm. one of the one of the counterpart of uh, our lending solution. Oh wow! Okay, so you were you were quite deeply. Uh... Yeah. Attack connected, or at least uh, oh, we, we, we we saw the we saw the difficulty from the inside, and uh, uh, at this time uh, we have been interviewed by the IMF, and they saw that from our perspective and from what we had to do, we did what we had to do, and more than it was uh, expected from the actual the current the current uh, uh, legal uh, obligations of the the digital asset service provider we did we we, we, we were beyond that because we applied the uh, method as best as best practice uh, in uh, in the way we we, we handled it uh, and uh, and that helped us uh, very much you know so the, the point is uh, for uh, crypto native companies of course we have to do to do to go step by steps and uh, and the switch is very fast, but I think uh, this time frame was a necessity. Um, you know, at the end of 2022, when uh, Christine Lagarde, uh, uh, which is the, 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 the leader of the European Banking uh, Authority, the, the European the, the Central Bank, uh, the European Central Bank, they, they, she pressed the, the, the EU uh, legislators to... to to have a deal quickly on Mecca because of the situation in Ukraine. Uh, we, we thought that uh, it was very early, you know, but uh, once uh, you leave the such crisis like Terra Luna and uh, also when you see uh, from the outside the crisis like FTX and all the all industry have been impacted uh, by it, as we learn also the lesson from Terra Luna, we, didn't, we were not impacted by FTX, but and so when you see that, you realize that this uh, this um, level up is very necessary for the industry, and we have also to clean up the the industry. Those who are not uh, who are not mature enough from the compliance perspective, as uh, do, do not deserve their place anymore, and uh, it has to be clear also because. Uh, uh, the most we have such crisis, the most we have a negative uh, uh, impact on the industry, and it will weaken our industry. And uh, we are, we are, we now have to uh, strengthen the industry. We have to structure, structure it. We have to show the, our uh, our best uh, profile to say that we are not the the bad son-in-law of the financial industry, but we want to get uh, in the family as uh, one part of this. So we have lots of work to do, and uh, I think this uh, this shift, even if it was a quick shift, is necessary and have been done on the right time. Right, and you know, it's a fun, it's also funny. I mean, I think that uh, an industry that is very concerned about how regulation is not moving in fast enough. You know, obviously, you know, can't complain when it happens too fast, right? Yes. Yeah. And I don't think anyone is complaining. I think there's a lot of excitement across the board. But I also think, uh, you know, we've been using that term regulatory clarity so much that now when we suddenly have it in one very important region, yes. you know, like I think a lot of people are wondering, wait, but is that it? Are we there yet? And the answer is no, uh, in my experience at least, because... Now we're kind of like at the stage of what comes after regulatory clarity. Yes. So there is regulatory clarity. Needless to say, putting aside for a second the fact that the regulation will probably evolve 
uh, it needs to also look over time because crypto is evolving so fast and you know DeFi is evolving and I know European regulators are already thinking about the next stages but um, you know there's essentially a period of 18 months between when the regulation passed and you know uh, when it's gonna be put fully into effect after it was ratified by all this by, by all the different countries but um, this is a really interesting moment for crypto firms and especially ones that That are very thoughtful about compliance in a way you know you and i talked about this uh, so i know you have an opinion but uh, in a way it's an opportunity for us now and when i say us i mean the crypto community or the crypto compliance community compliance teams for platforms technology vendors and the community at large to work together and show regulators how we take the regulation and turn it into a the best possible crypto native uh compliance program Uh, you know that's at least how I think about it and how you know we work with a lot of our clients to essentially take the regulation and turn it into a standard and the more we can be proactive the more that, that standard is likely to be uh, yes. you know fit for purpose for crypto so anyway uh, I, I I was I was supposed to ask a question instead I made a statement so I'll turn it into a question by asking you what are your thoughts <laughs> <laughs> uh, first friend, uh, just uh, you know as I, I am a uh, uh, A law specialist I want just to specify something please uh, uh, Mika is a regulation regular as a regulation it uh, it has a direct application uh, the countries do not need uh, to uh, ratify it the application of it is direct the, there is another set of rules which called the uh, directive those directive uh, needs the ratification from the member states so Mika is uh, is enforced right now and That will be fully applicable for first the first step of application is uh, in, in, in next year at the, the, at the, the beginning of next year for the stable point regulation for the part of the Mika and the whole part of the Mika will be uh, fully applicable uh, 18 month after the uh, after last month uh, and uh, we also still as a grandfather clause, For those uh, DSP who have been just registered in the local uh, local uh, let me say that local framework uh, we have 18 more year, more months to uh, to get the the, the my car license so that yeah, just thank, uh, you. The, thank you so much the, for, uh, for correcting me uh, I was speaking uh, you know for correcting where I was not precise enough really really helpful so you So what about uh, what about the question um, I think um, yeah I, I totally agree uh, with your statements um, the how to say that the it's it's not done yet of course it's just uh, the very beginning of the regulation of the industry uh, we are also uh, have an exam discussions with the regulators about uh, the 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 about DeFi because uh, there are some drafts even in Mika there are some uh, uh, some uh, technical standards standard who, uh, who have who has to be uh, uh, set by uh, the ESMA or the, the European market Authority uh, and also the ABA which is the backing authority which is uh, building the set of rules for the stable con part of the regular of Mika regulation. So there are lots of work to be done, lots of discussion to have with regulators, with uh, lawmakers. And um, uh, the, the, the very key points of Mika is that finally we have a unique market for the digital asset in Europe, which means that 27 countries have Uh, are as are now uh, considered as one market for from the digital asset perspective and it's very important for all the companies uh, who are settled in Europe because they can address all the 20 uh, 27 company countries on the same time once they get the Mika Mika uh, license and uh, from the business perspective is very huge and game changer. Uh, that is the first thing for the, the first thing and the, it's very significant uh, it's have been it's not said enough I think 
And the second one is yes, uh, we have lots of uh, job to to do. We have also to face the the uh, the banking and financial uh, uh, companies who want to go or to be part of the game, uh, the crypto game also. So I think it's a very great challenge also for the crypto natives company. Thank you for that insider's perspective. Uh, just so helpful because, you know, sometimes you, uh, obviously we all follow the news, uh, et cetera. And, and, you know, and we talk to a lot of people, but it's just, uh, uh, you know, you, you just, I just think you framed it in a very, very helpful way uh, for me, even though I speak about this all the time. And I hope also for, uh, you know, our audience. Uh, so let me, uh, let me, uh, you know, kind of start, leading us towards the end of the conversation because we're, we're, we're moving towards uh, time, but there's, you know, I, I, let's do like a bit of a speed round. Uh, hey, you know, uh, you don't have to be, we're not that tight with time. We're not that rigid, but uh, you know, a few minutes maybe on each of these questions, uh, which I think are very important. So from your perspective and based on everything you just said, if we look at the first, at the next six to 12 months, you know, we all know we're in a bear market now. People are talking mm -hmm. about, potentially coming out of it. Obviously, there's always a little bit of uh, wishful thinking in the industry. Uh, so broadly for the industry and also specifically from a you know, regulatory and compliance perspective, what's your outlook for the next six to 12 months? What's your, your outlook? Uh, what do you predict ah, for the I next predict, uh, Okay, outlook, yeah, I did not hear the words. Yes, um, the, the next six months is very decisive for those who want to be um, a great player of the crypto industry in Europe, uh, pers personally, uh, that is my that is the first thing uh, from my point of view. Why? Uh, because um, because uh, you know the first one who get the Mika license and can address all these clients all around Europe is the one who can win the game. You know, or, or, or almost uh, or at least the first part of the game. And uh, I think uh, even if there are some big uh, crypto companies like right now, the 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 very first uh, the, you know you know the, there is a there is a sort sort of the the this the, is the crypto native stage of the game will be finished in six months. You know, interesting. And then the financial industry part of the game will start after that. And that, 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 that what I mean when I say those who had the, even the banking, even, even from the banking sector or the financial one or the crypto native one, those who can have the, the, the first license uh, Mika, the first Mika license will be a very good, great player for the next stage of the, this game. And I think the, all the companies have to keep it in mind because uh, uh, the crypto native company uh, has to avoid one danger. The great danger for the crypto native company is the glass selling. Uh, the, gla the glass selling. What does it mean? Most of, uh, for few of them, and I hope uh, the fewest it is, the better it is, uh, do not see uh, how hard it is to get a Mika license. They do not see how strong they have to structure and build their pro internal program and uh, all the all the uh, governance program to get there. And uh, I think this is also the 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 great challenge for those company. And uh, even if it's a bear market, my my, my best uh, uh, advice for them is to invest and to. To, to, to do more the more investment they can do even if it's in bear market because uh, you can it, you can get paid from your investment right now if you do it but if you wait too too, too late you can uh, lose uh, the even the the small part of the market you have uh, you have now yeah. wow uh, it's funny because uh, I had a couple more questions for the speed round, but you already uh, front run me <laughs> by by providing like all of the answers. If I try to uh, pick a few headlines from the things mm -hmm. you said, and I think you 
I think I think you made a very important a few very important statements. First of all, uh, this this idea that you know in six months we'll be moving essentially the, the industry in Europe, the crypto industry in Europe, crypto business in Europe in six months is going to officially graduate from uh, the crypto native phase to becoming a part of the finance industry. Yes. Yes. That's a really strong statement and I think very, very important one to emphasize. Yes. Uh, another thing you're saying is that it's, you know, you're, you're basically cautioning. I was about to ask you about best practices and, and you're basically cautioning not to underestimate uh, the, you know, to, you know, how, how much you have to think very carefully about building your compliance program and how sophisticated it needs to be and how, you know, uh, comprehensive it needs to be. Um, you know, and I, I, I'll just speak from our experience that it, that we have seen it happen where not enough attention was given. We see it often, unfortunately, often, actually, not enough attention, not enough urgency is yeah. given to building compliance program because, yeah. you know, it's, you know, you know, in the life of a startup, sometimes six months can feel like three years ahead uh, and definitely 18 months, but it's not something that's very easy to build quickly and regulators yes. expect you to be very thoughtful about it. Um, so very, very important point there. Yes, that is a, that is a shift of the mindset who has to be, who has to be, uh, who has to be keep in mind by those, uh, the, 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 the crypto natives company. And, um, that's why we are here together because, uh, I think, uh, having a solution like Solidus Labs is, uh, one of the important points, uh, to, to get to the financial industry, uh, perspective. Well, uh, I appreciate it. And just to be clear, I didn't pay you to say any of it. <laughs> no, 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 you did not pay me. I, I said no, like no, with this one in the lab. I did not, I did yeah, not say it. I know, I know. You are setting, uh, you are setting up um, a very good standard and uh, it, it has to be followed. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. It was a, it was a total joke, and obviously, uh, you know, there's just such a great community of compliance leaders like yourselves. Uh, you know, many of our partners who are doing other important things in the crypto compliance space that that are all working in order to help crypto businesses be able to yeah. make, you know, uh, successfully graduate, as you say. That was my you know, point. Yeah, and and as you, yeah, yeah, and and as you say, uh, you know, and Europe is really an interesting test case now because it's it's one of the where, where this process is most advanced in the world um so i guess uh you know I'll, I'll finish by asking you if there's anything else you'd like to add uh, in terms of is there anything we should be looking forward to from me uh, from uh, maria anything uh from you or just any other important thoughts you want to share with our audience who are ultimately many of which are compliance professionals who are you know looking to learn how to do their their job in the best way yeah, just uh, for want to emphasize the fact that um, uh, crypto native companies have to avoid the glass selling danger and to keep in mind that uh, there is a, a strong shift and a very huge shift of business we are getting to the financial industry and uh, we have to be mature enough to get there. You have to be professional enough to get there. Uh, you the the days for the we cannot stay young forever. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> from the human being, we want to stay young forever. But from the business perspective, it's good to to get mature and to show that we are an adult. And all those those key points has to be kept in mind. And we have to also to you do not have to lose the sight that um, the banking and the financial companies will be will want to be part of the game and uh, and the, the the game is changing now again just beautifully said i don't think i have anything else to add uh, so i will finish just by uh, i believe you 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 do deserve a congratulations or as as they Thank say uh, from in israel mazel tov because uh uh Thank you're you. planning to get married in the summer uh, yeah so, yeah yeah so congratulations and mazel tov. I, I know, not married this summer. Next summer, I will prepare it this summer. And okay. Next <laughs> summer. Next summer. Anyway, uh, in Madagascar, if I remember yes, correctly. Yes, yes, yes. You will get an invite. 
Oh, wow. Well, in that case, uh, then you're right. I will get to visit Madagascar soon. I'll be there for sure. <laughs> no way I'm missing this one. Uh, and I promise, uh, you know, I will not uh, mention compliance for one evening. <laughs> uh, but no, uh, Rija, thank you so much for taking the time uh, joining us today and for being so open and, and helpful. Uh, I think your, your experience from the trenches uh, of building a safe and regulated industry in France and in Europe is extremely valuable and 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 more you know um and in addition to just thanking you for joining us thank you for everything you're doing in order to make it happen so thank you very very much uh and uh i look forward to uh meeting you actually next week in uh ETH paris yes i will be very happy to meet you and thank you for having me you guys are doing a great job and keep doing that because uh together we are trying to build a strong industry and I think the, I hope and I'm sure that the, the U.S. Uh, lawmakers also will, will work hard to give you, uh, to give the U.S. market, uh, um, uh, so the, the, the U.S. crypto market uh, legal certainty and uh, uh, also uh, congratulations to, uh, to the company who, uh, who won a case against the, the SEC. Which saying that uh, that uh, XRP is not uh, a security. So we are moving forward, and I think it was a very good time also for me to talk about it. As uh, as uh, you are, it is a uh, you know our discussion is uh, the day after this uh, strong uh, strong we call it French jurisprudence. So as a lawyer and a crypto compliance officer. I am very happy to have this interview right now. Oh, it's, uh, and you know what? And I have no doubt that it would be even more timely in six months from now. So maybe we can do it again then uh, yeah. and see uh, if everything develops. And yes, uh, it's it's just big, big things are happening in crypto regulation, compliance yeah. and standards all the time. And of course, you're referring to the... Uh, you know, uh, a, the you know some the judge's opinion in uh, the Ripple case, it was yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing, which he did accept the SEC's point on uh, institutional sales, but generally, one of the main points is that uh, having Ripple, uh, to the token XRP on exchanges, uh, yes. is not necessarily a security. So, thank you for bringing it up, uh, and thank you for joining us today, Rija. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Merci beaucoup. Au revoir. Au revoir. <laughs>